What's up guys, my name is Brandon and we're still a few months away from seeing the first beta of iOS 15, but since I get asked about the next major iOS release every year around this time, I wanted to discuss it. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the device compatibility for iOS 15, more specifically if the iPhone 6S and the iPhone SE and maybe even the iPhone 7 if they will get iOS 15 or not. We're also going to discuss the potential new features, the release date, and more. So first off, let's talk about the supported devices for iOS 15. So I do believe that iOS 15 will drop support for a few devices. Unlike we saw last year where every device that was running iOS 13 could run iOS 14, I don't think that's going to be the case this year in 2021 with iOS 15. So the devices that I do not think will make it to iOS 15 are going to be the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus, the iPhone SE, and also the iPad 5th generation, the iPad Air 2, and the iPad Minis 3 and 4. Now, why do I think that these devices will not be supported with iOS 15? Well, there are a couple of reasons. So if you look back on the history of iOS, Apple seems to drop support for devices based on a combination of things like the RAM, the chipset inside, and even the competing products. So I think in the past, it's been much less contingent on competing products, but I think that will actually play more into the equation this year than previously. And we'll talk about that more here in a moment. But the main reason that the iPhone 6, for example, did not get iOS 13 is because it had just one gigabyte of RAM and the inferior A8 chip inside. So iOS 12 was a very performance oriented update for the older devices. And that left the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6 Plus, the iPhone 5S, and all the other devices with a solid stable software to run for years. So they did not need iOS 13 because iOS 12 was so great on those older devices. Now with iOS 14, I did predict that all iOS 13 iPhones would be supported, including the iPhone 6S and the iPhone SE, two phones that a lot of people at the time speculated would not be supported with iOS 14. But I did not think that would be the case because they both had two gigabytes of RAM and the A9 chip. And I kind of just described everything in that video from last year. However, with iOS 15, I do think there's a couple of reasons we might not see the iPhone 6S or the iPhone SE supported. And I think that the main one is going to be the fact that they have a dual core CPU with an A9 chip inside. So the A9 is just dual core and the iPhone SE was the last iPhone to have just a dual core CPU since the iPhone 7 introduced the quad core CPU setup with that A10 Fusion chip inside. So the iPhone 6S or the iPhone SE are just simply not efficient enough power wise or especially battery wise to withstand another year of updates, especially since iOS 15 is bound to bring some intensive new features to the table. Because remember, Apple touted iOS 14 as a performance first update. They really focused on the performance. We saw that big article you know, from Bloomberg earlier in the year saying that Apple is really dividing their team into multiple parts to make iOS 14 as less buggy as possible, like as few bugs as possible. And that tells me that they also focused a lot on making sure the 6S and the iPhone SE were as stable as they possibly could be. And I would say they did a good job with that because both the iPhone 6S and the SE are great on iOS 14. I mean, aside from the battery life, the performance is actually really impressive, even when it comes to like the widgets, playing games, everything is really good on iOS 14. But still, not only are the iPhone 6S and the iPhone SE just simply not going to be efficient enough, but they also came with just 16 gigabytes of memory for the base models, which is not even close to enough for a device in 2021. So it wasn't until the iPhone 7 where iPhones came with a base storage of 32 gigabytes. And that's, I think, another reason that we won't see iOS 15 on the 6S or the SE. And then the final reason is because we also now have competing iPhones to the iPhone 6S and the iPhone SE in terms of the overall form factor. And that is going to be on the iPhone SE 2, which came out in 2020. So you could even say the iPhone 12 mini is similar just due to the size, but the 2020 SE is a modern iPhone with a home button. And that's going to be the one phone with a home button that Apple focuses on in 2021, in my opinion. Now, if you guys remember my video from last year for which devices will get iOS 14, the RAM played a major factor in my argument for the iPhone 6S and the iPhone SE getting iOS 14 support. But since the iPhone 6S, the iPhone 7, all the way up to the iPhone 8, 
all have two gigabytes of RAM. I don't think that's going to matter at all since I don't see there being any way that Apple drops support for the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus. I think that the CPU and the internal memory are going to matter much more this year when it comes to iOS 15 compatibility. Now, as for iPads and iPad OS 15, I do believe we'll finally be seeing the end for the iPad fifth generation from 2017, the iPad Air 2, and both the iPad Mini 3 and Mini 4. So we could also be seeing the 2016 iPad Pro get dropped as well, especially if we see a new iPad Pro released in 2021. And again, this is mainly due to the fact that these all have the outdated dual core chips inside. Now, as for features to expect with iOS 15, we have not had any leaks as of yet, but if you guys remember, Apple really focused on the performance with iOS 14. Even though we got major features like the widgets, we got things like the app library, we got things like the new incoming call UI and things like that, Performance was allegedly the main focus with this software. So with that in mind, you'd have to imagine that iOS 15 will bring even more major new features and changes to both iOS and to iPadOS. So we might see things like the long awaited always on display on the lock screen like we have on Android. And we may see things like the ability to lock applications with Face ID or with a passcode like we've been wanting for many years now. We could see things like multi-user support on the iPhone and the iPad. And especially for iPad OS 15, we could see things like widgets on the home screen or the app library, which are both missing in iPad OS 14. But of course, nothing has leaked yet in terms of new features or changes in iOS 15. So we really have nothing to go on except for just basically speculation and hopeful wishes for iOS 15. But when anything leaks in terms of the features, I will have videos coming for you guys. And I will also make like a speculation video if you guys want me to. So let me know down in the comments below what type of features you want in iOS 15. And also if you want me to make a video talking about my top features that I would like to see implemented in iOS 15. So now let's move on to the expected release date for iOS 15. And again, nothing is official. These are just simply my predictions based on history and the fact that I've been covering Apple and iOS for over a decade now. So iOS 14 was announced at the Worldwide Developers Conference on June 22nd. And of course it ran through the entire week like it always does. And the first beta of iOS 14 did come out on the day that the event started there on June 22nd on that Monday. Now, that's what Apple does every single year. They do that every year. They release the first beta on the first day of the Worldwide Developers Conference, but it's usually in the early part of June. But since 2020, of course, brought a lot of uncertainty, the pandemic and everything, Apple actually pushed that back to the 22nd. But for this year in 2021, I would expect Apple to go back to what they normally do and have the Worldwide Developers Conference in early June. So probably on June 7th is when I would expect Apple to hold their annual Worldwide Developers Conference. So it would probably be from June 7th all the way till June 11th. And of course, we will see the first beta of iOS 15, if these dates are correct, on June 7th, that Monday right there. Now, again, this is just pure speculation, but there is a lot of history and research that goes into these predictions. So we will not know the confirmed dates until invites go out later this year, but that is what we have to go on right now. So as for the official release date, the official public release that everybody gets, this is actually a little bit harder to predict. So if we go back in history, iOS 14 was released on Wednesday, September 16th. iOS 13 was released on Thursday, September 19th. iOS 12 was released on Monday, September 17th. And iOS 11 was released on Tuesday, September 19th. So as you can see, Apple has literally released each of the last four software versions on a different day of the week. However, the one thing that all of these dates have in common is that they fall on or around the third week of the month. So if we go down to September right here, you could see that if I had to guess, I would actually expect iOS 15 to be released to the public on the week of September 20th, 2021. But of course, Apple, you know, it could be any day in that week, but Apple has actually been liking Tuesdays lately. They've been releasing a lot of things on Tuesday. So we could see it potentially on September 21st of 2021. But of course, any day of the week of September 20th is when I would expect to see the final public release of iOS 15. And just like I asked you guys to do for the potential new iOS 15 features, it would be cool if you guys left a comment below with your predicted release date for iOS 15, just to kind of guess. And it'd be kind of cool to look back on and see if you are right 
or just completely off. But anyways, guys, those are my early thoughts and predictions on iOS 15. I will be making more videos on iOS 15 once features or release dates or anything gets leaked or confirmed. So stay tuned for those videos. Also, let me know your thoughts and your theories on iOS 15 down there in those comments below. And of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys do subscribe for a lot more content coming on iOS 15. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.